Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. A San Francisco native and honorary New Yorker, the athlete we are speaking with today is a Filipino French 25 year old IFBB bikini pro. She's a proud Fit Body Fusion athlete and ambassador, happily rising and grinding every day to become the best version of herself. She believes that when we let our unique light shine, we encourage others to do the same. And when she's not putting work in the gym or cooking in the kitchen, you can find her hustling as a healthcare advertising account executive. She feels most alive, strutting it on stage, in the zone at the gym, or dancing at music festivals. And she is passionate about spreading positivity, training and traveling, the power of community, and of course, freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Maya Ostavi. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing today, Flat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. I'm so happy we're doing this. I feel like we were just talking a little bit about this, but I honestly feel like we kind of know each other already just because of how much we've connected online. And it's nice to finally like chat with you. Yes, it's such a good feeling to put a voice because I've obviously I've seen your YouTube videos and I've listened to this podcast forever, but to be able to like speak with you in person is a whole different experience. So <laughs> I am loving this already. <laughs> Yay! Yes, I'm excited uh, because I know that you're already in the on demand coaching platform too. So it's nice yeah. to also just say thank you for being in there. Um, and you know how this show works. So I got to ask what is something you do <laughs> or think about? Out right before your heel hits the stage oh I didn't think about this question for so long it's so funny <laughs> every time I actually do this thing I would remember this podcast oh so, my god that's so cool um, yeah yeah so the thing that I actually do um and I've been doing this since my first show so since last uh October um I, I put my hands on my hips kind of in like it's somewhat of like a super woman pose, mm-hmm. um, but it also opens my lats. <laughs> yeah. So, so when I start, so when I started out on stage, um, I got those good ratios. But um, I put my hands on my hips and kind of in that super woman pose, and I close my eyes, and I take a few really deep breaths to kind of ground myself um, and make sure that I'm present in the moment. So, I feel like going out there this is that time period is so important as soon as you step on stage um as soon as they can see you even from you know the side of the stage it's important and I really want to be there and savor the moment because it's supposed to be fun you know like you're supposed to be there for it and um I think that in all areas of my life just taking a couple minutes or not minutes but a second Mm -hmm. to close my eyes and breathe and just feel whatever I'm feeling in that moment really grounds me. Um, And I don't know, deep breathing has helped me in many different points in my life and also right before I step on stage. So that definitely. Yes, I like that a lot. It's it's pretty obvious too when you're on stage that you feel present um, and you always bring a level of, um, it looks like present awareness to what you're doing at least from what I see online and the way you present yourself and the way you talk about things like you're really connected to your emotions you're really connected to the way that you're feeling about things so I think that that's pretty obvious and awesome that you do that especially before going on stage too and um You've been a big advocate for Shelby. This is the coach you work with at Team Fit oh Body gosh, Fusion. Yeah. <laughs> You're always showing love. Yeah. You're always appreciating her. So why do you think it's important to find the right coach and trust them? So from the very beginning of when I started looking into coaches, um, I had been following a lot of, like many people do before they you know, start competing, following a lot of people who had competed before. And I read different captions, usually just on Instagram, of people who have either had positive experiences or negative experiences. And some of the negative ones 
really kind of deterred me from starting to compete in the first place. I was like, wow, I don't really want to develop this negative relationship with food or further negative relationships with food. I, I think that at some point we've all kind of had some sort of disordered eating and I was worried that competing would kind of bring that out in me. Um, Mm -hmm. but I, so I was really cautious basically because of quote unquote horror stories I'd heard. So what I did (laughs) to try and deter this is I became like an, a research freak. (laughs) I like (laughs) before, before choosing, I looked online, I looked on Instagram, I pulled tons of different names and then I researched them. I looked at all the different members that were part of the team on Instagram. I tried to see like comments, like what kind of things were they saying to each other? Was it motivational? Was it, did it feel genuine? Like what, what's going on, you know? So basically stalking. I did a lot of stalking. (laughs) (laughs) And then um, I reached out to a few different people and did phone consultations. And I think that's really, really important. I didn't even know that that was going to be kind of the deciding factor for me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was going to be from the research. But I reached out to um, a few. And from my first call with Jamie DeBernard, I felt like I found my home. I still did a couple calls after that, but I felt like I found my home. Um, she was actually the one, she's the head of our team and she did my consultation call. And she, after like 45 to an hour minutes of talking after I got off work, I felt like it went by in 15 minutes because she's mm. just amazing. Uh, and we had such a good connection. She was like, I think I know who I want to be your coach. And, you know, I had originally reached out, um, thinking that I thought I knew who I wanted to be my coach, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, is Hannah DeVore available? Like, Hannah was why I knew about Fit Body Fusion. And mm-hmm. she's amazing as well. She's also on the team. Um, but Jamie, she she knew me. She knew Shelby. She's like, I, we can look into a couple other coaching options, but I have a feeling I have a perfect coach for you. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Like, I trust you. Um, you've gotten to know me up to this point, And I can always do more consultation calls with other coaches if it's not the right fit. So they, from the start, their organization was really on point. Um, she set up the call with me, uh, or Shelby Shep set up the call with me to talk the very next day after I got off work. So um, we chatted again for about 45 minutes to an hour, um, Shelby and I the next day, and I knew from that call too that, that she was the one. Um, I didn't feel like there was any like sugar coating of anything, Um, the way that she talks clearly shows that she thinks through all of the programming that she gives, uh, all of her clients. And also she had just become pro. Um, and if you know about her story, she took a long off season due to health reasons. Mm -hmm. And so she was saying, she's like, I really, really want to focus on just coaching right now. You know, I want to pour my heart and soul into this. And because I'm a first time competitor, it was the perfect match, you know, she was able to give a hundred percent of her attention to coaching at that period of time uh, when I did my first prep and, and not that she wouldn't at any other time, but she was really there Mm -hmm. like (laughs) way more than you would ever expect a coach to be Um, or not expect, but you know, the level was just amazing. And I don't know. There's something where I felt like it wasn't, it didn't feel forced. I didn't feel like she had to like pump me up or give me extra motivation. I just, she gave me my plan. I did it. And, and she created this bond with me over time too, where like at first it was just, you know, talking about the basics. But then we started talking about, she would ask me, you know, about my emotional health and, you know, where I'm at mentally. And like, that's part of our weekly check-in. And if there was anything wrong, she'd reach out to talk to me about it. And I think it was through those times and, um, and also through the times that later on during this season that we were able to actually stay together for shows and finally meet and everything, um, that we just grew closer and closer. Um, she's kind of like a big sister to me, um, in that way. And I feel like she's mentored me through, not only, you know, bodybuilding in this sport, but also in life. Mm. Uh, Cause I'm, you know, just like with any other competitor, when you're competing, life is still going on, right? Yes. Um, there's still a million other things that you still have to do. There's work, there's family, there's 
um, all that. And she knows all of that about my life, right? Like she, mm-hmm. She's not my therapist, but like, I sometimes joke, like, yes. <laughs> you know, I joke about him, like, you know, everything. <laughs> um, so it's just very special. And I think that from all the research, I knew that she had the basic coaching uh, credentials and every interest trained well and all that. And then on the other side of things, she had the humanity because it's so much just more than just the, you know, basic coaching credentials and things like that to make a good coach and specifically to make a good coach for you. Because just because Shelby's the perfect coach for me doesn't mean she's also the perfect coach for somebody else, right? She's amazing. But like, if somebody is looking for something else, then that's not her, right? So, um, so I, I'm a really big advocate of finding the right coach for you. And a lot of that is your self-advocation so like doing your research talking to people and putting in the effort because it'll go um so far in the long run for I sure. love that I like how you said it's it comes down to self-advocation as well like that's the only way you can actually then find it the right coach for you is by making sure you know what your needs are when you talked to Jamie the very first time you said something just clicked and you felt like it was like home what was different about that call than calls you had had with other coaches? So it's, it's interesting. She actually started asking me about myself, not just about like my coach, uh, my competing goals. Mm. So she kind of was like, you know, what do you do for a living? You know, like, what do you like? Just things about outside of, you know, I want to compete at this show. I want to be this many weeks out. Um, like, what 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 are your calories at right now? Like, let's see if we'd have to reverse you. Um, how long have you been training? Those type of things too. And like, what role does fitness play in your life? Um, and she, I felt like she was getting to know me uh, as a person outside of just what I, what kind of competitor or what kind of athlete I would be, which was very refreshing and. Not to say that another another coach also asked me similar questions. However, and that was great. I really appreciate that. But it was just the way that we started talking very naturally. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally get that. So did you have any coaches before competing? Um, I actually had a couple. Yes. So there was one where I did a challenge and then I won the challenge. Wow. Um, and, <laughs> and it was the add mask to that ass. <laughs> <Alexa> <laughs> Danko booty challenge. And I did that. And I love Alexa. She is awesome. Down to earth, super relatable. Um, she actually lived on Long Island at the time. And for a long time or for a period of time, I also lived on Long Island and the I lived in Brooklyn too. So I was kind of like close by. So I liked, um, I never got to meet her in person, but I really liked the feel that, you know, she was kind of like a hometown girl and stuff like that. Um, and then I think that is the only other coach I had, um, that was, you know, an actual like one-on-one type deal, but for a long time before I competed and even before I found heavy lifting and training, um, I did Kayla Itzinus's BBG guide, which is like the bikini body guide. Mm-hmm. And I started that in college. And that's kind of actually how I took my first like steps into, you know, fitness, I guess, in the fitness world and kind of what opened my eyes and why I started my fitness Instagram to begin with, actually. So I'm forever grateful for that. Um, but I will say there's only so long you can do plyos yes. <laughs> and, um, and cardio <laughs> because I, <laughs> at a certain point, was like really burnt out. Um, and I obviously finally found what was right for me, but that's, I am forever grateful for that helping me get into fitness though. That's awesome. And you've, you've really transformed your physique over the last few years. And I know that this can really only happen with consistency, which is a lot easier to maintain when you actually love what you're doing, love your lifestyle, find what works for you. So what has allowed you to embrace and fall in love with the process of bodybuilding? Wow. Okay. So this is something I 
I've done so many posts about because it's so important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like I'm constantly like talking about it and preaching consistency and preaching about the grind. And then girls would be like, yeah, but like, why do you like the grind? Yeah. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's not like, oh, I love, I love how sucky things are. Like, it's not in that same sense. I think it's, um, it's more about the gratification and the empowerment that comes from the grind. So um, when I first started training um, or first started like picking up dumbbells and like working out and everything or training heavier uh, and everything, I started to show myself what I was capable of. And a lot of women say when I'm chatting with them at shows or something, say the same thing. They're like, wow, like I didn't know that I could do that. And it was proving something to yourself. Um, And in that same way, I think that the grind does it. Right. So um, so when I step into the gym, sounds so silly, but I feel like I am on top of the world, like baddest be out here. <laughs> so that. I'll step in and I'm like, I, the passion is so there. I feel alive. Like sometimes, and I work out before, um, before I go to the office in the morning, I'm so in my flow. Like I'll forget what time it is. I'll forget where I am. Not, not mm-hmm. completely. Like I'm not completely out of the zone but like I'm in a flow where I'm like all that matters is the next rep all that matters is pushing out that rep or going a little bit harder um and it's that grind like getting up early and then being able to feel that and then seeing how that affects my life whether it be you know being more empowered and then having that you know carry over into how I show up at work or um you know how I think about things like I'm realized that I'm capable of doing hard things because you know hey I push myself in the morning physically like I can push myself in the afternoon mentally at work you know it just shows me that I and so many other people are capable of doing those things and it's letting those moments of the gym or during prep humble you like when I'm going to failure and you know I pick up the 40s to do um, 45 to do some dumbbell chest presses and I fail out or something and I'm like oh I can't get out the couple reps that I wanted to max out on like it's knowing that you haven't done it yet but you still can like you keep working at that you'll be able to and so if you keep grinding you'll get that gratification and it's like no matter what the hard work that you put in will always pay off so I wouldn't say it's just the grind um it's that falling in love with that process and then letting it humble you and letting it empower you and just, I'm snapping over here. Oh my goodness. This is a <laughs> No, oh I God. love this. <laughs> and, and then letting it show you that you're capable because it'll carry over into so many other places and it'll change the way that you show up and just showing up and keeping going and saying that consistency and knowing that that's where the magic is. Is mm-hmm. like I have chills, you know. Like, yeah. Thinking about it, just because I never thought that would all start by me deciding, like, hey, you know what? I don't think I want to jump on boxes anymore. I think I want to move to the weight room. Like, mm-hmm. with that simple decision, I realized that there's another way, and and that through that, you know, all this would happen. Like, who knew? So That's um, crazy. I would say this, like, essentially. I love the process and I love the grind because of what it has given me and has given so many other people. Um, and it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's just beautiful. That's why. That's <laughs> I love it. awesome. No. Yeah. That's really clear. And I, I just think that it's really cool how you articulated that as well. And you mentioned that you like when, you know, you're getting up early and you're killing in the gym and actually one of the listeners wanted to know what, like some tips you might have for starting to get into early morning training? Oh, okay. Yes. I (laughs) was Mm -hmm. never an early morning trainer. So good question. Um, I think that when you are finally up, you realize that you have all this time to be selfish, which sounds weird, right? But if you get up and you head into the gym, um, or head into, you know, wherever you're going, um, you 
train somewhere else downstairs or whatever. You get up early and you get there. Usually there's no rush hour there. It's like you're able to set the tone for your entire day before anybody even gets up. Yeah. And that like, that is amazing. So I'll get up, I go, go in and I'm training before people like open their eyes, you know, like mm-hmm. talk about a head start. Right. So with so many other, um, people who also train the morning, I've talked to them about that. And I'm like, even the mood in the gym is different at that time. So I would say like letting that motivate you. And then once you are, are forcing yourself, trust me in the beginning, it's hard. It really is. <laughs> so once you're forcing yourself to do it a certain amount of times, you realize you're like, Hey, like I actually have such a better tone for my day when I get up early because I'm able to set it. I have more time there because after work it's one uh, like jam packed. Um, yeah. And also I feel like people are more social after work or something, but like uh, if I'm waiting for a machine, I'm like TikTok buddy, like got stuff mm-hmm. to do. <laughs> so in the morning, there's not that many people there. And the people that are there are like, I want to get in. I want to do this. I want to train hard and then get out. At least that's been my experience. Like, I don't see anybody who's like, I'm coming here to lollygag at (laughs) five in the morning. Like, no (laughs) no one wants to do that at five in the morning. So, um, and then by also doing that, I feel like I I have this, like, almost, I mean, I take pre-workout, but I almost have, like, this, like, little bit of natural boosted energy, too, for when I get to work. And I feel like I'm more productive. So when I don't, uh, like, I, God forbid, like, wake up or wake up late or something, I'm in a whole different mood. And like, I have to try and train myself to be like, it's okay, Maya, like positivity, you'll be able to like, get your stuff done and get out early and then train. But if I, so, you know, it's, it just kind of changes things. Like you don't get out all your energy. You don't get that natural boost. You don't get to be selfish with your time. So what I would say is you can't avoid the suck. (laughs) So wake up, um, set your alarm, set 10 alarms if you need to. Trust me, I most certainly did at one point um and name the alarms I have my alarms named dedication and consistency (laughs) I I wake up I see it I'm like oh okay yep here we are let's go (laughs) um so if you snooze that you're 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 snoozing on your consistency you're like okay I'll delay that for later you know so wake up don't avoid the suck get up and then realize how amazing it is once you get there you're like holy crap like it might have been a push to get here but look I think it's so worth it it's, it's so, so worth it. And you're in control is my biggest thing. It's just like with, you know, like your macros, if you're bringing your meal somewhere, you're in control of it or meal plan, you're in control of it. Whereas you go somewhere and you're like, Oh my goodness. Like I feel helpless. You do not feel helpless if you get up early. So, um, don't avoid the sucks as with all other things and just do it. And eventually it becomes a habit. And I feel like habits, that's like again with consistency magic because eventually it's something like brushing your teeth you're like oh this is what I do it's not even a question like people just know you know (laughs) it's just expected right Mm -hmm. so great question because I was definitely a late sleeper for majority of my life (laughs) (laughs) I like how you said that the energy is just different and it gives you a time to be selfish for a bit that is very relatable I love the mornings for that reason like I just feel different when I take the time to like even if it's just getting my cardio in or because I I work for myself so luckily I make my own schedule but it's there are some days where I can't avoid something I have to do in the morning you know I still run a business and school and everything but it definitely makes a difference I've noticed it myself and I think that that's great advice and like you said your your mood is then boosted for the rest of the day and it shows up in other areas of your life but it does require that dedication and it requires you to say yes to it and when you mentioned you know make it just like brushing your teeth it's funny you said that because I literally was just writing a paper on self-care and I was talking about how it needs to be just as much a habit as brushing your teeth is. Um, and I there think you that go. <laughs> going to the gym is a form of self-care. And if it's something that, you know, like to me, like when people say, oh, I haven't been to the gym in a while, I'm like, but how though? You know, like, <laughs> tell how? me about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, is this my daily <laughs> life? You know, it's just part of it. But I, I can understand, you know, how that is then beneficial. So before getting into this type of lifestyle, though, you did say you were a late sleeper, but what else was your life like? 
oh my goodness, I ask myself this question all the time. I'm like, what should I even do? <laughs> that sounds, awesome. It's so funny. Um, do you mean before fitness or before training or yeah, before competing? Before fitness. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, well, I online shopped a lot more. <laughs> really? Because you weren't yeah, spending money on competing I, and food. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Like I realized that before fitness and even like before BBG, I, I spent a lot more time online shopping, going out. So I was still in college at the time. Um, and I just remember drinking a lot honestly like um and wow. it was kind of like where I mean I don't know how to explain it's not it wasn't I didn't treat my body with the same amount of respect I, I mean I did or I thought I did like you know I went and I you know went to the gym once a week or so when I got there um but I partied a lot I was in my freshman and sophomore years of college right before so I was you know adjusting to living in New York because I'm originally from California and I moved and I went to school at Manhattan College in um, New York City which is like in the Bronx Riverdale area Mm -hmm. and so I was what's actually really common there is like you'll it's kind of like a bar culture Um, so like you'll either go out to the bars or like me and my best friend would sometimes like actually not sometimes, even like on weeknights, it was so bad. We would like go into the city and club. Um, <laughs> so I feel like I got a lot of my partying out at a really early age. Um, and that's why when people now are like, oh, you're so boring for a 20 something. And I'm like, shoot, like if you saw me <laughs> when I was like underage. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I honestly don't know what my life would be like without this because I eventually would have like burnt out on that you know yeah like I know I would have so I would say that I I still had really strong relationships with my friends at the time um and I still am friends with all those same people that I was friends with before this and you know they love and accept me for who I am at all my different stages which is awesome that is awesome Um, yeah I'm really really lucky to have a strong support system family friends um, coworkers even. So that, that's a whole other story, but I get emotional speaking about that as well. What's <laughs> new, but, um, but yeah, I, I honestly don't know what I would be doing because my life was kind of different. I was like a really young college student and I was drinking and partying. So watching a lot of Netflix, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure what else I would be doing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how things change more like, wow, I had I, I mean, I have so much time to do. I had so much time to do the things that I'm doing now. What was I doing with it before? And seeing how we've made shifts with our time prioritization and how we've used it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And we, like I said before, we received lots of questions from some listeners. And your friend M was like, how are you the greatest friend ever? And she <laughs> wants you to know she loves you and that you're a ray of sunshine, which I totally agree with. <laughs> <laughs> I love Em. She's amazing. She has been such a rock through my last prep. Like she's been amazing. At one point, I was I was really low. I mean, everybody goes through highs modes, but like I was low. Um, and I hit this really low point, and I just reached out to her, and she wrote me a like, oh my goodness, I don't even know. It was like a novel about like mm-hmm. the type of athlete that I want to show up as, and you know, who I'm growing to be, um, and, you know, deciding, and I kid you not, so Emily's, or Emma, sorry, Emmy is going to be like, what, <laughs> how do you remember this exactly, um, she said, decide, like, choose, or yeah, decide, and act on who you are grow, go, growing to be daily, and, like, that stuck with me, I, I was just that. like, yep, it's so simple, you know, it's like, what do you want to be, where do you want to go? Like, is this action getting closer to that point? Are your thoughts getting closer to that point? You know? So there you go. That's, exactly. She's amazing. Yeah. She sounds she's like a, a really great time. friend. <laughs> you guys yeah. are a good team then. Definitely. <laughs> I love that. It's good to have friends. I'm so surprised who do people that. ask questions. 
by the um, way. I'm like, what do people want to know about me? I honestly <laughs> wasn't surprised. surprised. <laughs> I was at all. Although I'm always nervous myself to post like a question sticker. I'm like, no one's going to ask. And there's just going to be this awkward, like one person asks and I'm like, well, yeah. no, I have to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, whenever no. I see people do those like questions and answers I'm like uh if I did that people are gonna be like what's your favorite color and like <laughs> I've never done a and a fun fact I've never done a and a on my Instagram <laughs> oh my gosh well no wonder people had questions for me to ask you <laughs> there you go <laughs> I guess that's what it is scarcity <laughs> um yeah well another person wanted to know like what the most well, actually, I should ask you this other one first. Like, what got you interested in bikini? And I believe this person probably means as in, like, the bikini division above probably other yeah. divisions. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, most of the people that I was following on Instagram at the time were doing bikini. And to be quite honest, I didn't know that there was another division. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely so, was in that When boat. I first... <laughs> right like I feel like there's not a lot of people posting at least in the like the realm that I was like the circles that I was running in about figure and physique so I didn't even even women's bodybuilding like I didn't know that there were so many different divisions I thought maybe there was like figure and and bikini once I started doing more research but when I first started getting interested the couple people that I that I followed were like people just like me um, along their journey, a little bit further along their journey, who had been getting into heavy lifting and then competed in bikini. And I think that the judges say that pretty often, actually, that like, this is the gateway <laughs> um, division. It's kind of like, you know, the one that like gets you going. And then like, if you want to keep going, you can like, move up into figure and you know keep building muscle. And, you know, depending on which division you think you'd either want to do or be more successful in, you know, you can move on from there. But this is honestly the only one I knew about. And I feel like there's something about the camaraderie amongst bikini competitors that is also really attractive to me now that yeah. I think about it. Um, so I'm sure that's like that in other divisions. Um, <laughs> but this is the only one I knew about when I first started, um, started like getting interested. I like that a lot. I know like when I started, I thought, okay, there's like, I honestly thought that I might have to do like a fitness routine and then I realized oh no that's fitness no way. I was like thank god but <laughs> it was like I sent emails to so many different people who I followed and I was like can you help me prepare for a show this is what I'm looking at and then thank god Amber Callahan was like no you need to do an NPC show this is what show you should do you're gonna do iron games and I was like okay got it but I would have never known about all that if I hadn't just like asked and I think that yeah through exposure yeah. too like I was following bikini girls it's funny because some of them I've had on the show and I'm like that's so crazy I've followed them from like the beginning but you you know like it is there's some level of camaraderie there's some level of exposure and I think also it's become so popular and when you joined as well like when you got into competing, I should say, um, bikini seemingly was almost just like calling in so many people. Like 2018, it, really was. it was, you know, people knew about it. It started to gain more, I think, um, ex exposure to, to the general population, um, mm -hmm. which, which was pretty cool. And then um, what have, what has been like the most challenging part of bodybuilding for you to adjust to, if any, this was another question submitted. Hmm, okay, so uh, before competing and even before reversing and be before joining Fit Body Fusion, I had already tracked my macros um, and I already was training heavy and I was going to the gym every morning. So that part wasn't really a transition for me, um, honestly, because when I joined, um, my whole mindset was like, I already do all this. Like, why not take it to the next level? Why not yep. reach my full potential and see what I'm capable of? So that wasn't really it. What it was is that extra, extra, I don't know, like 20%, I say that you're a little bit more intense than everybody else who might do, be doing the same thing. And then mm -hmm. for me, the transition was learning to be okay with not being accepted. Um, like not having all of my decisions be accepted universally, right? So like, oh. it's not common 
all the time, especially in New York City, actually, especially in New York City, to go around with your Tupperware when everybody's ordering from like, you know, these cool hip New York City restaurants for <laughs> for lunch or, um, you know, being, you know, at a, in a conference room and then like running away to go eat your oatmeal or something, you know, and it's not even like I was eating meal prep foods, like classic meal prep foods that are like, oh, you're thinking it up with fish. Like I did macros. So it, was, it wasn't even um, those types of foods where they became like stigmatized or anything like that. But it was more just the intensity and learning to be okay with, you know, people constantly asking questions like, oh, you can eat that or, oh, you have to go to the gym right now. Like, but we're doing this, you know, it's, it's being so, I guess, not content, confident in your own, you having a sense of conviction, there you go, mm-hmm. a conviction in your decisions, sticking to them, and being okay that not everybody's going to like that, and not everybody's going to understand what you're doing, and they don't necessarily need to, it's, it's your choice to compete, you know, like, it's not their mm-hmm. choice, and they don't have to, and sometimes you can't explain it to people, and they'll be like, wow, like, I really support that, and that's cool, and I appreciate your grind and dedication. And they usually say, but I could never do that. <laughs> but, right. um, but then there's some people who are like, I just don't get it. That's ridiculous. Why would you want to build your body that way? You look fine as you are. Like, there's always going to be that person. Like, there's no one getting around it. There's going to be someone like that who has something to say about your body or what you're doing. But learning to be like, you know what? Okay, cool. That's, that's your opinion. And not be upset by it. Because like, you're so busy trying to get in your gallon of water and Mm-hmm. go to the restroom every five minutes that like you don't have time to be to be not okay with that like you can't let that shake your mental state at all you know you just keep you keep on mm-hmm. keep it on and you you know let them think what they want to think and the more you're okay there's some quote about it but the more you're okay with your decisions the less you let other people opinions affect you yeah, so, absolutely. You know, like if you feel good about it, then that's what matters. And that's what'll keep you pushing forward. That's something I talked about at my most recent event. And it's also something that comes up among my clients who sometimes struggle with the judgment that can come from others. And I always try to encourage them to think about where their own resistance might be coming from, because sometimes when we are challenged by other people's beliefs or opinions, it's because maybe there's something within us that, you know, is actually challenged by what we're doing as well. And so it's really important to always look at, okay, so if this thing, like let's say bringing my Tupperware to a restaurant is scary to me or an adjustment, it's kind of asking yourself like, well, where is that really coming from? why do I feel that way? What am I concerned about? And like what feels threatened? Like if someone were to say something and I think just by doing some self-awareness and going into like where this is actually coming from, we can realize and prove to ourselves that, Hey, a lot of this has just been created from past experiences or in our mind or because of the type of people we surround ourselves with. But then like what you said is when you have that confidence in your own decisions, then you really won't be affected as much by other people's. And also I think you'll start to build up that self-confidence and that belief in your ability to continue to make empowering decisions for yourself, regardless of maybe external feedback. Yes. So much yes to all of that. I, <laughs> I, I wish I could like, like it a hundred times. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, it's so, it's so much of it comes from within and like, especially because like this is a super individual like I believe in the power of community we all know this that's clear but this is an individual sport like no one's there for when you are you know it's late at night and you want a scoop of peanut butter you know what I mean like you have to have so much internal like I don't know it's like you have to want to keep good on your promises to yourself Mm -hmm. because that's what'll like keep your mindset right keep your actions right keep you adherent like it's all from within and it's so individual and like you have so much time to think about all this because you're alone so much yes. that like that I think it's so important yes to reflect and to look in inward and that's something I've learned a lot too from looking at you know just kind of like clicking through the different mindset coaching 
um, questions, even sometimes like I won't be having that specific problem, but I'll click through it to see what, to see that. what <laughs> responses you have. <laughs> so um, like for everyone who doesn't know, if you click through on the mindset coaching, there's like, if you're on prep or if you're off prep and I haven't been in the mindset program or in the one-on-one coaching since I've been in, since I went into off season. So sometimes I'll click through the in prep ones to see like what you, uh, what kind of prompts or um, videos you have in there just to see like, you know, what other ways are there to reflect on this or like, what could I do in that scenario? You know, just like kind of becoming a student of all the information that you have in there. (laughs) Thank you. I love that. Yeah. Like there's, um, there's a, clear level of proactiveness that you bring to everything you do, which I think has influenced and created a lot of the success that you've been able to achieve. And I think that that's what sets apart a lot of champions from people who maybe burn out or don't make it as far is you have to be willing to not only be proactive, but also act upon it. So like and, and for those of you who maybe you don't even know at all what we're talking about, we're talking about my on-demand mindset coaching platform. It's a platform I made specifically for competitors to go and receive instant on-demand coaching and support based on a problem that they're facing. This is an internal problem. So um, whether that's body image, food relationship, motivation and discipline, goal related, whatever it is that you're going through, there's probably a module in there for you. Um, so if you want to check it out, you can. I'll put a link in this uh, podcast episode. But essentially, I think that when there are athletes who choose to prioritize even the deep inner work or even not so deep inner work, just inner work in general, they're going to go further because it goes back to what you were just saying, which all of this is an inside job. There isn't going to be someone there to slap the peanut butter out of your hands. And, uh, you know, we like to believe that our coach will do that for us. If we need him in a pinch, we like to believe that, um, even coaches like to believe that they'll do that for their clients. But in reality, what keeps us moving further than anything is that intrinsic motivation. It's not coming from, oh, I just want to step on stage for my, you know, X birth, X meaning a specific number, not an X (laughs) as an X. Um, (laughs) I'm going to show him what he's missing on his birthday. Um, No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, because he's going to be in the crowd at a bodybuilding show, right? (laughs) (laughs) Your your ex is going to be right there, front row. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god you're killing me oh my god I'm so hot right now that's hilarious um yeah so it can't come from that external factor because we'll continue to prove to ourselves why it doesn't matter enough when it is extrinsic when it is like I want to look good in this well that you don't maybe look as good as you want to in it yet so you convince yourself to stay where you are because you haven't been able to really fully experience or even imagine what it's like to get there. Um, going back to even what you said before, like the grind always pays off. And I think that that comes from an Mm -hmm. internal belief and knowledge that my work is worth it. And it's going to come to fruition. What I want is going to become mine. It's going to become reality. And it's only going to become that way if I take responsibility for what I have to do. So, you know, you're also someone I'm going to kind of go into your journey as a pro but feel free (laughs) yeah your 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 journey like you turn pro pretty quick so um I was actually curious about this but someone else wanted to know too like what was it like to earn your pro card so quickly because you did your first show in October 2018 and then your first pro show was in September 2019 wow when you put it that way it sounds so fast it does (laughs) but for me I felt like I went through like a million and one things (laughs) I can imagine it feels like yes (laughs) <laughs> yes it was um it seems really really quick and yes it was technically really quick um however this this last prep that started right when I got back from the Arnold and then lasted all the way through the end of September I swear it felt like a million preps in one like mm-hmm. I know that's not the case but um it did feel like that's six months a really long time yeah <laughs> it's Yep. And then obviously I wasn't like just dieting the whole time. If anybody knows my story, they know that like I I overshot (laughs) leanness a little bit too much. Got a little Mm -hmm. striated in my glutes. Um, It's so funny when I talk about striations, everybody in my family like started looking it up on Google, like what striations are. (laughs) That's awesome. My mom's online 
on Google looking up striated glutes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I kid you not. Like, so funny. It's anyways. So let me get back to the question. That's just a whole separate matter. But um, <laughs> how it felt to earn my pro card so quickly. Um, it felt extremely gratifying. Um, I I still feel like sometimes it hasn't hit me yet because I'm so freaking proud of it. Like. Like when I, when I look back, um, I, I think it's all worth it. Like, I think that the prep is the most amazing part of it. Like the actual daily grind, the process and everything, um, is so amazing. And then realizing that at the end I freaking did it. Like I, are you crying? I sometimes, yeah, I am again. <laughs> oh my God. I look back at pictures and like, I look back at pictures and videos, especially the videos. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started on the videos. I even took screenshots of people who are saved down pictures of my story of people who like tagged me and things and like messages people send me. I constantly take screenshots of messages that women or people, mainly women, women send me about like how they've been following my journey for a long time. And like when they felt, when they saw me, when they felt like they were winning, like I I can't even begin to explain like how much that warms my entire body, like my entire heart and makes me, and I constantly joke about being emotional. I'm like, LOL, like I'm just a cancer. It's who I am. But like, I actually am so emotional. Like if you've ever seen the way that I walked off stage that day, like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> that is a ball of emotion right there. Uh-huh. Um, and like, it felt it felt like everything I put in was worth it. And I already thought it was worth it just stepping on stage, you know, and seeing Shelby, you know, she flew out for USA's um, to watch, to watch that show. And she wasn't going to, you know, Um, seeing her, being able to see her in the crowd and I'm beaming at her and she's beaming at me. And um, I looked down at Sandy and I looked down at Tyler and I was freaking smiling my butt off. And um, Mm -hmm. like, and then there were a couple other, um, a couple other judges that I had also, or well, one other judge, um, Steve DeVore, who I had competed at uh, Universe, and I had asked for his feedback because I literally went up, I waited till the show ended, and then got feedback from like, or got emails from as many judges that I could. Um, so Linda St- Stevenson um, and Steve Stephen DeVore, like even the judges like who weren't in the center, like they all matter, like all judges feedback matter. So I try and get it from everyone. Um, and they were extremely helpful. So like Steve and his wife is an IFBB pro bikini competitor too. Like I saw him and I smiled at him. He emailed me actually right after I went broke too. So like, it, I just felt like it was a win for not just me, but a win for all of us. And like everybody who invested anything in my prep, like the amount of time and I was like it just goes to show like this is so totally an individual sport but like that mentorship like that the the kind messages that people send even if it's just like a hey like I see you grinding like get it girl like all that stuff like it all matters it all keeps you going and so it was extremely gratifying it's like all that culminating to this one moment where you feel like you freaking did it and like that's when the work begins when you get into the ISBB pro league, but then you're like, okay, yes. time to do more work. <laughs> um, and I know I'm like rambling. I get so, I I like get so heated rambling. when I talk about this. No, okay. It's great. It's kind of like my stream of consciousness, but um, I don't know. If, do, do you know the story of like why I even competed at USA's by any chance? No, I don't. And I was going to actually <clears throat> ask you, cause I remember watching your note to self video and I was like, there's gotta be something behind all of this. <laughs> yes. So, um, for those who don't know, I, I, when I posted about becoming an IFB pro, like if you swipe to the the right or the left or whatever, there's a video of me finishing my last cardio session before the show. And I did this note to self video where like, it was like completely raw, like no makeup on sweaty <laughs> headphones still on basically telling myself that like, this is my time and I'm going to make myself proud. And the reason why I felt so overly emotional is because I didn't think I was going to do that show. Um, Oh, I'm getting chills talking about it again. Um, I reached out to Shelby and I was like, Hey, you know, I don't know one, if I can date the time off work. I had just competed at universe at junior nat 
and at a regional show out in California, um, the NorCal Championships. And I had already um, got my first like top two placements the year before, or first placement the year before at Eastern. So I was like all set. But um, I had just taken a ton of time off work. I didn't know like if I was going to be able to get more time because I hadn't requested it in advance and it was coming up pretty soon. You know, the time between Universe and USA is pretty quick. Um, and then also I was like, budget wise, like, I do remember I, you know, that. I pay rent and I do like, I, I, I still have a lot of things to pay for. Right. So I was like, I don't know how I would swing it with makeup with like USA's is also a lot more expensive because it's a two day show. It's not universe, which is a one day show. So you have to pay for makeup, like more, you know, cause you're two different days, um, like hotel flights. And then I'm telling you the flights were outrageous. So I would have been able to do it if like the flights were normal price, but the flights were insane, insane. But I, but all the feedback from the judges was like, just bring it in a little bit tighter in your midsection. And you're right there. Like you covered your stride glutes. Like you, you, you should compete at USA. And they're like, do it. So everything in my heart was telling me I have to make this happen. But my logical side was like, okay, but you <laughs> can't just like, like, oh, here, budget out the window. Like, just go, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I messaged Nicole Desmond. Her name is Coley Cole on Instagram. And um, she's, she's one of my good friends, like one of my best friends now, but back then, good friends. And she had went to the Arnold with me earlier that year in February when we started prep and I was like hey I heard you're competing in USA's like Shelby and Jesse told me Jesse Palmer and Shelby first clarifying for anyone who doesn't know (laughs) um told me that you're competing like do you think you maybe would want to split a room with me I'm not sure if I can do it yet like financially but you know hey like let's maybe try and make things work and I'll see if I can swing it so first step getting time off work got it I have an unlimited vacation policy at both agencies I'm at which is great but because it was so last minute I didn't want to like it's kind of rude to like just be like mm-hmm. oh I just need to leave that's so, awesome by the way <laughs> yeah no it's really cool I'm very um what is it uh, not li- liberal of them but um generous of them it's very generous of them to do that <laughs> um <laughs> so I got my time off work and then Nicole messaged me back and I was like hey I got my time off work let me figure out the budget stuff and she said my aunt has a timeshare in Las Vegas. And if you want to just like pay maybe just like the booking fee, just help out with that. You can stay with me for free. Wow. Yeah. Like I would not have gone to USA's if, if Nicole hadn't done that. Like if she hadn't offered it, I was seriously about to be like, I don't know if I could spend because the flight basically cost what my hotel and my flight would normally cost. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was obnoxious. I, I still mm-hmm. to this day, I'm like, I felt like I was just cutting off my arm and leg and just handing it to the airlines. Like, <laughs> I was just like, here, just take my entire body. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, so she did that. And, and that's also why she, she was so emotional when I, I ran off stage. I ran like directly into her arms <laughs> when I got off stage Aww. and she hugged me and she was crying and I was crying and she was like, she said this, these words to me, and I kid you not, I, I didn't even know how to handle myself. She was like, I know that this wasn't my time. Like, this wasn't my time to go pro, but, like, me being here allowed you to. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think that they're, like, the universe, like, is something, this was all meant to be. Like, this is your moment. Like, you are able to shine right now because I'm here. And, and sharing that moment with her, with Shelby, with Jasmine, my other teammate, was there. Jackie, um, like a lot of other girls that were there hanging out backstage with us. And it felt unreal. Like it actually felt like a dream. <laughs> so that's, that's the big thing is like, I, I did this whole like Instagram story again when I was like at the airport um, saying, you know, thanking Nicole and telling everyone that she's why I was there. And I, without a doubt in my mind, know that I would have, probably pulled out and I'm like hey like can't afford it I'm gonna wait and do um do the next national show instead so because of Nicole and because like like I just kind of like a will like when there's a will there's a way to like make it happen Mm -hmm. 
and just constantly being like, look, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. And everybody just, you know, saying, I don't know, like her, just the fact that she was like, Hey, like let's make it work. I, I can't believe that people, my mom even was like, Oh my gosh, like how were you able to swing that? You know, like, and I, I told her and she's like, that's amazing. Like that's a true friend right there. That was, is yep. awesome. Yeah. And I feel like that same kind of close connection and close bond I've also built with uh, many teammates on Fit Body Fusion. And it's further proven to me like how this is a family, it's not just a team. And other teams are like this too, you know, where they are also like a family, which is so beautiful to hear about. Absolutely. I, I agree. And yeah. <laughs> I, I'm lucky to have a lot of amazing teammates and also non-teammates, just girls in the community who I feel super connected to and grateful for. And um, yeah, it's pretty awesome when that happens. So you did mention when you were going into USA's, you were told like you should do it. You only need to do these things, but you also had lots of feedback from judges through every show you did. <laughs> and it was like, you had to really, um, you had to really implement the feedback you got carefully. And I remember watching all of this and being like, how is she going to, how is she going to be able to do what they said about tightening her core when she just took the striations off her glutes? And I was curious, like what, what did you do to make, those adjustments from being too lean to then bringing a fuller look, but then bringing it in just Ooh. enough. <laughs> and that is, that's magic by Shelby. No, um, actually, <laughs> so when I first came, uh, this is also pro tip for all coaches and competitors, take your pictures, your checking pictures in natural lighting. Because for the longest time, I was sending Shelby my pictures and she couldn't see the striations on my glutes because I was taking them indoors, not near natural lighting. And then when I arrived in California for my regional show, she was like, actually the weekend before I got good pictures of natural lighting, she was like, oh my God, like, where did those come from? <laughs> so side note, that's the thing. <laughs> natural lighting is best. Um, and then, so I came into lean. I actually got fourth place at my first regional show of this season, wow. NorCal Champ. So fourth place. Um, and then I went into, and my feedback was very clear from Sandy. She was like, holy moly, you are extremely lean. You need to put mm -hmm. some meat on your bones. She's like, but not too much. So we're like, she's like, cover the striations, but just do that. Like your shape is there. I love your look, you know, all the good things. Like we don't need to rehash what's good, but she was like, that's the feedback, right? Uh -huh. So um, this is insane. Even at that show, like between, and I, this is not something that Shelby and I do. Like she doesn't do this with a bunch of other clients. But she's like, even between prejudging and she's like, we need to go out and get you a burger. <laughs> like, and she's like, and I don't ever do that. I, ne I never say go out and get a burger. A lot of people will, but she's like, I don't, I don't do that, but we need to get you a burger. So I got a burger. <laughs> and then after that show, um, she was like, we have to up your calories a lot. And I was doing like light pump workouts and I was checking in with her in the morning and at night. So I was, and mind you, during this time I was on vacation. So I was in California, um, between basically from my regional show all the way through to junior nuts. So I had the time to do this. So I was checking in the morning, I was checking in at night and she would actually up my macros like at every single check-in I was eating up to 3000 calories Damn. per day to try and to try and put on weight. And if you saw me from, or if anyone saw the pictures from NorCal champs to junior Nats, I, I, it doesn't even look like it affected my body that much. Like my body was just like, just burning up all the calories, burning them up. I still had like, I still had like slight striations by the time I was at junior Nats that time um and I and then we had to keep that going from junior nuts all the way into universe and so this is why the whole like picking a good coach and trusting the process is so again comes up so important is because at those moments where I was eating a ridiculous amount of food and everybody I knew around me was getting leaner and leaner and um talking about you know like extra cardio this and like pushing through it and like that was their difficult for them like that was what was difficult and hard and they were pushing through like 
what I was pushing through was trying to get enough foods into my body. Like I had to start eating peanut butter and jellies just to like get in all the calories because it was hard for me to consume that amount of food. Like, Mm -hmm. and it's not like I'm, you know, eating, you know, artificially, you know, tons of artificial foods because you don't want to mess up your digestion. Right. Right. So I'm over here like shoveling white rice into my mouth and I'm like, it's at some point it's not enjoyable. Like you, you don't want to do that. It's not fun for anyone to be like, Oh yes, more, just give me more rice and shredded chicken. I'm like, don't get me wrong. Love the food. But like after a certain point, like how many grams (laughs) is fun, you know? So I was, I had to keep that going. And then my feedback again from junior NAS was that you could still see the striations and I still had to fill out. And I had to get uncomfortably full. And just the way that my balance, the way that my body balances out is that I gain more weight in my midsection than my legs. Like right now I still have leg lines. It's, I don't know how that happens. Like, um, so because of the way that my body balances out and the judges, when they email me back, even Tyler said that he was like uh, it's gonna be hard because clearly you fill out quicker <laughs> in certain areas but like he, he was basically like dancing around the fact that like my waistline gets bigger <laughs> when, uh-huh. when, when I try and cover my glutes um and but they did give me wonderful feedback the entire time and it was very clear and decisive and consistent which is awesome so I between junior NAS and USA's like I was saying I had to get uncomfortably full um my clo- even my clothing didn't fit the same way and I had moments of self-doubt where I was like what am I even doing and that's actually when I messaged Emma her name is coffee and commandos on Instagram anyways um I messaged her and I was like I hit a point where like I feel so much self-doubt and this doesn't happen a lot for me like it's usually I'm a pretty confident person like I it, it just I felt very out of place because I wasn't, and every time I tell people this, they're like, gasp. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't training at all. Wow. I did like yoga, yoga, like three times a week. I didn't touch a cardio machine. I was eating almost 3000 calories and I had to be okay with like basically not going to the gym for a full month between junior nat and USA's. Oh my gosh. Did that drive yeah. you at all mentally <laughs> a little crazy? <laughs> oh my goodness. You you heard how like going to the gym is like, I'm like, this is my moment. That's like your I'm thing. shining. This is, I'm a bad, like I, <laughs> like I am a star, right? You're in so yoga. Like I'm where... a bad bitch. I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't even like power yoga. Like mind you, this is like light vinyasa. <laughs> oh no. It was like it was like the lightest of all the light yoga. It's like stretching basically. And Shelby was like, I only prescribe yoga because I want to keep your body like moving and I know you like movement, but like basically it was like you need to be doing nothing. <laughs> Stop burning calories. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. So pushing through that was extremely hard. And then getting on stage, um, to looking what I felt like was nowhere near stage ready was heartbreaking for me um that morning and then throughout the day as the day went on between pre-judging and finals um I felt or not between pre yeah between pre-judging and finals but also just like in the morning when I was hanging out with the team um I felt more comfortable and proud because I was like even getting to this point and pushing through what I had to go through to get here and then you know standing up and you know like showing up as my best self and like delivering on the judges feedback like that's all you can do all you can do is just keep showing up delivering on their feedback and doing the best you can so I was like I'm doing that and I'm doing everything that's in my power like I have to like let go and let myself have fun yeah. and you like when I got on stage I clearly was not expecting it because they called my name out for first call out that at USA so I think I got like seven and I <laughs> I, Jamie, um, Jamie, and also Jesse were there too in the crowd, and they were like, "Maya, first of all, you didn't know it was your number. Second of all, you were surprised, and you're not supposed to look surprised when they call your number." <clears throat> I like looked down, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's me!" And then I was like, "Oh, oh whoa, oh, oh, I'm gonna walk out." <laughs> they were like, no, That's awesome. Maya, like, That's what? And then, and then I was beaming. I was so happy, and it it was so gratifying to know that like 
through all that, like they recognized it, they picked up on it. And then when I asked for feedback for moving forward after universe, they all said, thank you for delivering on the feedback. Like you clearly mm-hmm. put in a lot of work to deliver on it. Obviously they didn't know that I was like doing yoga and eating. Right. The <laughs> they, did, they had no idea how, what I had, what I had to go into delivering on it so quickly. And obviously that's super drastic. Like that's not like a healthy thing. This is an extreme sport. Like, um, and it was obviously under the guidance of Shelby and we were like monitoring it very carefully, but it was extremely, extremely gratifying. It was just the boost I needed because my confidence was kind of like in the trash um, because a lot of it, like I was saying, comes from training and instead it had to come from a lot of mental strength. And like, I also read, or I've read this book, uh, it's called um, Relentless by Tim Grover. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I would read that pre-workout while I was taking my pre-workout actually <laughs> on the Long Island Railroad when I was heading into the city um, during my prep. And he, it taught me so much about mental toughness. And then I would also listen to this podcast and I would listen to Andy Fisella's MFCEO podcast. And um, like I had to learn so much more about like stick like the mental toughness, the mental resiliency, everything on that side of it, because it wasn't something like I wasn't putting in work in the gym. I was putting in work in my mind, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like I was putting in the emotional work and I had to stop letting my self doubt drain me if I was going to keep going and like lead a happy life. Um, because again, tons of life outside of competing that still goes on and everything. Um, so it was like, I don't know. It was just like keeping going and putting in work in other ways and improving in other ways um, that kept me going during that period of time talking to friends and like, especially Jesse Shelby and Cole and Emma when she was, when the, the conversation I told you about earlier, um, that was kind of what helped me deliver on that feedback and not like it caught up in my own mind. I think it's important to reach out and talk to people because again, it's so individual but it's important to reach out so that you don't just keep repeating that going in the same circles um, with, if you develop any self doubt and like understanding that you're difficult is other than other difficult or you're difficult is different than other people's um, definition mm-hmm. of difficult. Right. Like, so that problem that I had, not many people have. Right. There's another girl, L, um, LP Burns on <laughs> Instagram. She also has mm-hmm. had the same feedback to like fill out and, we we talked about it a little bit over Instagram and then in person for a couple of minutes. And it's so, so hard when everyone else around you is getting leaner and leaner and you have to get to this point where like you don't feel confident, you know? Right. So that mental toughness is what that taught me um, or mental toughness is what that kind of process taught me. And I was able to deliver on that feedback and then, sorry, this is such a long winded answer. It's a really long no, season. It's okay. Um, and then, Good. I'm glad that you're like completely chill with it because <laughs> I love talking about this stuff. I <laughs> love it going too. Going into USA's, sorry. Um, yes, uh, going into USA's, I we kind of like kept it up until like we could no longer see the station. And she's like, "All right, we have to cut you hard." <laughs> and she's like, "Are you ready?" And I was like, "I'm ready." I was doing hit in the morning training and then cardio at night. Um, and I was eating extremely low calories for about the week and a half leading into USA's. So we cut me hard. And um, that's probably why I was so emotional in that note to self video after my cardio mm-hmm. session. Because I just it was like all of my tank, my tank is so empty. I've given everything I can to this. Like I, you know, shoved my face <laughs> full of food for weeks on end. And then I drastically cut like and I could do not like cut in half like more than more than cut in half um I was like leading into it and again this is this is only for like peak week and it was only for a few days like I wasn't dying please do not worry extreme sport all the disclaimers I was eating like a thousand and a a thousand hundred calories or something at at one point for and going from eating like three thousand to that and then a little bit under that is like 
your body's probably like, what on earth is happening? <laughs> like, that's not something. And then on top of that, doing all the cardio and the training and still going hard. Like, I, I felt like I poured my heart and soul into it in on both sides, like with the eating and with the, with the training and with the cardio. So that's how I was deliver, able to deliver on the feedback there. And then um, coming out of that pro show, everybody was kind of just like, the judges said, tighten up your core maybe a little bit more, but like you went pro, so like this is the look we like. We love the whole presentation, everything. Um, so do that and then have fun in the pro league, you know, like welcome to the pro league. Um, and coming out of USA, we, we prepped me for my first pro show and I actually hadn't, I wasn't sure which one I was going to be doing. So we were just kind of like cruising along until I chose a show. And then we did Phoenix and then Michigan. And now my feedback is to bring up my upper body a little bit more, um, my shoulders and like chest and everything to balance out my glutes, which is so ironic. I know. <laughs> because now my glutes are just a little too big in comparison. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like glutes are always the problem for me. <laughs> So, um, so now I don't really get to have any many, many heavy leg days, which kind of like hurts my soul. I'll be real, yeah. but it's okay. I understand training for my division, training smart, delivering on feedback, all that. I chose this. So, um, that's my feedback now. And that's how I was really able to deliver on all that and why I trusted Shelby through all of that when a lot of times I was like oh my god is this really good that I'm eating 3,000 calories and not touching anything or like stepping foot inside of a gym like that is where my you know like if I didn't fully trust my coach I probably would have been like whoa you know right. I don't know if this is the right path but clearly it works um and I'm so grateful for her guidance there throughout the process and then all my friends um and family who kind of were like she knows what she's doing trust 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 and I was like I trust her don't worry <laughs> yes it's true like I know sometimes girls will get you know information from their coach and then they'll ask other people like oh what do you think about this or what should I be doing or they'll even message other coaches and I think that that's just Ooh, yeah. you know a big distraction it's so much better to just ask your own coach communicate your own needs or concerns and then trust and if, if you have a problem with what your coach is saying like you should evaluate or reevaluate why you started working with them in the beginning because I think now it's so easy to compare your journey and what you're doing to others and like you had said before if you had actually allowed you know the comments of others and how they're like having to do all this cardio and having to like cut food and blah 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 then maybe you would have thought oh is there something wrong with what I'm doing and then that would have taken yeah. away from like your entire journey which got you to the end goal which is the most rewarding thing um outside of the actual prep itself is to have all of that hard work be you know come to fruition be validated and um you would mention too how nice it is to have people to reach out to and i know um like emma you said coffee and commandos so she sent mm -hmm. that nice message to you and then um i know like emmy emmy k fit she had said oh, like yeah. she just loves you so much and i think it's just a good representation of how powerful like friendship is in this community and even though it is an inside job and it is it um it is an independent what's the word i'm looking for well it's a one person sport you know individual yeah individual, individual. <laughs> such a hard word <laughs> but, <laughs> a lot of words are hard to come to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think that it's like you can still like use your friendships, use your resources to help you and then like provide that back. And um, it's just cool to hear what you've also had to go through and experience and the way that it impacted you. I think um, it provides perspective to what otherwise people might think is, oh, that's a positive problem. But in reality, like if so much of your strength <laughs> comes from the gym and lifting and, you know, you love that and look forward to it to be told like, hey, reel it in. We're not doing that. You know, go do some yoga. It's almost just like, oh my God, like you're stripping a part of my identity. But then yeah. you were thrust <laughs> into a massive cut that was like completely <laughs> different. Yeah. 
Which... No, I loved it. I was like, give me it. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. It's so funny. Shelby was like, um, okay, you sound like you're crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, more? Okay, give it off. Like, give it over. <laughs> and I was awesome. like, oh, you're up in my cardio? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people who's like, likes hit more than I like steady state. Oh my gosh, hit just makes me feel alive too. So you like, do your hit on the printing it out. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I level like 13. It's crazy. I love it. I was like drenched in sweat. Like, oh yeah. (laughs) I'll be at the gym sometimes and like these old people will be on the treadmill next to you. They're like, how fast are you going? And I'm like, oh my goodness. (laughs) Which I think is so cute. And I love it. (laughs) They're all like, are you on the track team? And I'm like, no, but, but <laughs> I've gotten asked that before too. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm 25. <laughs> right, I'm like I graduated already. Oh, my gym's that's like so right across yeah. from the high school too, so I'm like, oh, that's not. Oh, me. that's why. Okay. Yeah, I was like, wait, oh, why were they asked that? That's but probably it's, it's it. interesting. People just like assume that like you're doing some type of sport that's where you're like performance based <laughs> and then you surprise them you're like I'm a bodybuilder and they're like what yeah you're they're like mm-hmm. but like honestly I I'm always amazed whenever I say I'm a bodybuilder like I get looks where I'm like they're thinking maybe that's not a like that's not a sport that they expected or what does that mean or you're not big enough to be a bodybuilder I'm like, <laughs> but it's it's hard to explain I'm just like it's yeah, bodybuilding like, uh... I sometimes if I say I'm a bikini competitor they're like they imagine and they they're like so what what does that what and does I'm that like mean? Yeah, yeah I'm like oh, it's, it's bodybuilding they're like oh I okay. say bikini bodybuilder that's a that's a I great way that. of putting it yeah mm-hmm. I am gonna start and, saying um, that it's it's very helpful for explanations otherwise I'll be like do you have 10 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like what do you do hmm how much are you really curious <laughs> right like and then you I can go deep yeah you went MIA for a bit, you come back and people are like, what happened? You're like, I, I was still bodybuilding, yeah. but I was doing yoga for it. And they're like, it doesn't make exactly. sense. <laughs> well, everybody at the gym was like, where have you been? <laughs> so I was like, away, away did from my love. Did you do the yoga from home or did you do it at a studio? I did it from home okay. because I would constantly, wait, this is, sounds so ridiculous. I would be tempted to get on the, tar- on the cardio machine. Like, yeah. So I did yoga at home because <laughs> I would want to be like, I want to move. Right. So I, can see that. I stayed at home and I did, I got up in the morning and did yoga and then went into work and Shelby was like, well, now it just gives you more time to practice posing. So True. there you go. That's and good I was like, but she's like, but don't it. practice too hard because then it's basically cardio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, you're you type me. in like yoga hit. <laughs> yeah. she also told me that she's like Maya stay away from the advanced yoga and the, the hot yoga she's like I don't want to see you at hot yoga stop oh, it man. that's so funny she yeah. actually had to like preface that because she's like I know you don't do it that's the best like when yeah. your coach not only it's nice to have your coach recognize the type of athlete you are yeah she totally knows me sometimes I'll be doing something she's like did you blah 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 I'm like oh yes <laughs> she just like know things about me because she's worked with me it's, it's only been a year but like since she's worked with me for this period of time that's yeah. awesome so yeah. I'm gonna take it a little bit off track because this is just like a fun little question um you're uh-huh. a cookie connoisseur and uh-huh. someone wants to know if you had to choose like absolutely had to choose and I imagine if someone's saying if you absolutely had to choose they probably mean like if there was a gun held up against oh your head God. like what cookie would be your favorite <laughs> or which one would you choose <laughs> okay so let me preface this with saying that this is a place you can order from however you have to go there in person because the experience that I'm talking about is like out of body experience. There's this bakery on the Upper West Side of New York City in Manhattan called Levane Bakery. And oh my goodness, it is like a cookie monster heaven. Like you go in, there are four types of cookies and the chocolate chip walnut and the chocolate um, peanut butter chip ones are my two favorites. They also have like um, oatmeal raisin and then double chocolate chip. 
you can smell how good it is from the outside. Like you walk it, you walk in and usually there's a line and it's amazing. So that is what by far my top cookie place, but you have to go there in person. Like you can order it, but uh, it's not the same, you know, like you need the full mm-hmm. experience. So you if you're in New York them. city, go there. Um, I actually did a whole like post on like the New York city bakeries. And then often people who ask me this question on Instagram, this is what I talk about a lot on Instagram, actually, which is like ridiculous. I'm like, I compete, but like most people just want to talk to me about cookies. <laughs> um, so, but I don't mind. Um, so that is my top cookie ever. Like, sorry, mom, when you make good cookies, but that's it. Um, and <laughs> she does, she does. But like this one, like you'll know why if you've ever had a living cookie. And then outside of that, I want to give shout outs to like my other like top favorites that are on Instagram because those ones are amazing. So like there's the competitor Cookie Co. I'm actually um, one of her athletes, Erin. Um, she actually lives out on Long Island too. Um, and she makes cookies. And I don't know if you've ever seen the competitor Cookie Co. cookies, but they're amazing. They look oh amazing. my goodness. So good. So um, I actually have my own cookie with her now. <laughs> I saw that. So that funny. looked freaking I love awesome. It. Yeah, it's awesome. It's totally, totally good. And like, I was trying to decide between doing two different cookies. There's like this banana bread one that I had thought up, and then that fruity pebble white chocolate chip Teddy Graham one. And I went with that one because I felt like it really. It sounds so silly. I said it tasted like sunshine, but like it tasted like happiness. Like I don't know mm-hmm. how to convey that in any other way, shape, or form. But like just like colorful, like unique happiness and um I always like talk about like radiating positivity and all this stuff and it like literally tasted like positivity in a cookie I love that. <laughs> so that was um that was that but so I really love the competitor cookie Co cookies I love um my cookie dealer which is um Karen Morrell she is a baker she's the wife of Juan Morrell mm-hmm. and he is a competitive body or he's a bodybuilder competitive bodybuilder obviously he's like <laughs> he was at olympia like he's like top of his game he just got his olympia qualification for 2020 um so like she's killing it she's gonna open a bakery soon shout out karen love That's her awesome. and then, like a brick and mortar <laughs> yeah bakery? yes a brick and mortar bakery like i am Ooh. so here for it i can't wait to go back to new york and visit and hit it up so there's that one i also love um butcher shop big company um he's like the flexible dieter on Instagram anyways he's a he's a baker out of I think it's Michigan Milwaukee Michigan I don't know it's like somewhere up there by the lakes anyways he has like a cookie subscription service where it's $30 a month and most of them are in my freezer but like recently I cleared them out for Thanksgiving so I brought them to family parties but like his cookie subscription service first of all they're amazing cookies and then also they're like it's thirty dollars a month, and that includes shipping for eight cookies. Like, what unreal deal? Mm-hmm. Anyways, so these are all like shout out cookies, but like, and then also how sweet to cheat. I love. Oh my goodness, there's so many. This is like really hard, but Levain is definitely top. Definitely so the secret to like being the a top pro one. is eating cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no Shelby, Shelby actually like hates my cookie addiction like she's like oh she, and my body does not react well to cookies like if oh I actually gosh. indulge the amount that I want to like whew, girl you I would not be a pro <laughs> like I would not be a pro like my freezer and my willpower have had to be built up that's why you're a pro quite some time yeah so mm-hmm. that's what it is because I mean, that's it that's all that's the only reason <laughs> um so yeah definitely Levain and then all those other cookie companies are amazing too I feel like there's more but like anyways there's tons but those ones are some special shout outs <laughs> I love that. I know you've posted like reviews and you've done like videos and made like uh, stories with your favorites. So (laughs) I I think like anyone listening who wants to like see this all summarized and also maybe check them out or maybe other ones that were left out, uh, just go to Mm -hmm. her page, which I'll put in the show notes um, as well as always. But I wanted to also ask you like, um, we just brought Gina Scafolio onto the show and she loves going to raves just like you do or festivals or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, people might refer to them as, um, but a few girls wanted to know how you've managed to stay on your plan while going to them. Okay. So 
this is all about planning honestly like so much about planning when Nicole and I um, and Emmy and Paige and then one of Nicole's other friends who's not a competitor when we went most recently to EDC Orlando Nicole looked into a place that had or Nicole and her friend Tiffany looked into a place that had a kitchenette so I wasn't on prep I'm like reverse I'm reversing right now but um I still stuck I still stayed on track we looked into a place that had like a stove um refrigerator all that jazz like full kitchenette and when you're able to do that it means like when you land you head up a grocery store you get your stuff or you bring it like I am notorious or famous I don't know which which one it is infamous for bringing a, a zip bag of shredded chicken that I made in my instant pot and rice and green beans with me basically everywhere I go just so that I have mm. something to rely on. So like, even if I wasn't able to hit up the grocery store, I have those with me. Yeah. And so you, I honestly didn't eat much at the actual event. Like I brought in a no cow bar with me um, because it doesn't mess with my digestion. Um, and it was, I was able to have it. And like, it wasn't like that long of an event where like I just ate big before and ate big after, but I was able to plan my day around that. And actually what was really cool was after I got out at the end, I had all these macros left where I was like, Oh, I'm going to have a bagel. Like it was so cool. Mm. So I think it's just a lot of preparation and then putting in for me, it's macros. So it's a little bit easier, Um, you know, planning all the macros out. And then like I, for me, I just like left a chunk at the end of the day. Um, And then I brought a protein bar with me. Mind you, I still had to sneak it in because you're not supposed to like, bring a protein bar in but I stuck it in mm-hmm. um highly recommend that and and then I was able to stay on track and all, honestly like in those moments because it was not long of an event I was so focused on like dancing and staying in the moment and like hanging out with friends that I didn't really think about eating however they did and we did order some fries on our last night at EDC Orlando and I was like wow I'm extremely tempted to have some and I probably could have fit it into my rack because I kind of like guesstimated it especially since I'm reversing, but I didn't, I was like, oh, what I have back at the hotel is a little bit more tempting. So like, yeah. I'm going to wait and go back and have like a big bowl of oats and peanut butter. Um, and for me in general, for how I stay adherent is by making meals that I actually enjoy eating, like planning mm-hmm. out meals in advance that I enjoy eating. So if I'm looking forward to it, then the other things aren't going to be as tempting because I'm like, wow, I have this amazing meal waiting for me or that I'm going to be making why would I want to have that and also like it's just what one not worth the risk but also like I just love my food so much like I am a creature of habit I have some very interesting food combos that I enjoy eating that some girls feel me on (laughs) Mm -hmm. um so like eating those things make me happy and if I'm able to stay adherent because of those foods and look forward to them then that's that works for me you know and I think that sometimes working in treats um if you're not too close obviously to your show really helps too like if you know you can have like your oreo crumbled into your yogurt later then you're like wow it's gonna be basically (laughs) froyo yes exactly yeah I think that's really important meal ideas yeah Mm -hmm. it's really good you guys are you guys have like a lot of um meal sharing too like I see you guys like share recipes or people will tag you and like the food that you always eat and um (laughs) yeah I I love that I think it's pretty cool though for sure we share a bond over our foodie obsessions it's cool (laughs) it is important to like what you're eating I think like sometimes it's easy to complicate like our relationship with food when it really just comes down to like you just don't like what you're eating So of course you're going to think about having other things. And, um, sometimes it, obviously most of the times it goes a lot deeper than that, but sometimes that's a good first step too, for people who are constantly feeling tempted is like, just make your day-to-day meals more enjoyable. Something that you actually look forward to or talk to your coach. If you're on a meal plan about like, Hey, I really liked this from our plan. Do you think we could like have that instead or, you know, make it work for you. Um, even if it means like you follow a meal plan and then you put in like macros for one of the meals you don't love as much and you communicate it with your coach that you replace it with something and see if they approve, you know, like it's just about finding something that you can sustain. So I have one more question for you before I ask you for your advice. And, um, 
Okay. That is, you know, we don't have a lot of competitors who come on here and talk about their life in work. I should say their work life outside of their competitor identity. So what do you do to manage your time, get your meals in throughout the day while working and visiting with clients? And like, what's your normal day-to-day like? Okay. Yes. Um, happy to answer that. Um, I actually, so I'm usually not at the client. I'm usually in my office. So when I do have client meetings and things like that, then it's a little bit more difficult. But for the majority of the time, I'm not at the client. I'm usually like on the phone with them or like um, conference calls with them or something. But I do have tons of meetings back to back, which kind of is almost just as difficult. Uh, So I plan out my meals and I usually try and make, so first of all, meal prep, obviously important. Um, but depending on how my schedule is, is like what type of meals I'll plan. So if I know that I'm going to be having a ton of back-to-back meetings, I might program into my macros things that are easier to eat quickly and then keep going with my day. Um, I know that when Jesse Palmer was on, she had mentioned that like she'll like work in like an RX bar or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's something that's like quick. Like she is a dental hygienist, something that she can eat quickly and keep going. So sometimes I'll do things like that. Um, and then for example, like if I have, let's see, if I have like back to backs all, all sort of the afternoon, maybe I'll like plan out like, Hey, I'll have like a slide out of this meeting here. And then I'll like have a quick like protein bar, go back in and then keep, and then keep, um, keep like working in my meetings and everything. And then when I get out, have like a bigger meal. I can look forward to so I don't feel like I'm starving the whole time um I think it's important to like eat um for me at least not everybody does some people have three larger meals but for me it's important to keep eating throughout the day otherwise I I get a little like antsy and I like want to eat um so I think it's a lot of planning and then kind of like adjusting to how my schedule is going to be and then balancing work-life balance okay so I work really late hours, not as late as I did in New York. Um, that was a lot, a lot. And um, the industry that I work in advertising is just known for being more demanding. Um, I don't start super early, but I usually work super work later um, and then bring my laptop home. So what I've kind of planned to do, I've kind of had to do, and it taught me early on, even before I started competing, was that same thing with like waking up early if I want to make time for it, like I have to be like an advocate for myself and take it into my own hands and make it happen. So my morning is my time to be selfish, like I was saying. And so I get most of my stuff done then. Like my training, my cardio, Shelby doesn't like it, but if I have cardio and training and stuff in one day, like I'll do them both in the morning. Like I'll just make more time for it. Um, and that's my time to be selfish. And because like, I don't know, kind of out of my hands, what happens with how late I get off or how much I have to put in work. And what if a client meeting runs late? You know, like I don't want anything to be up to, up to chance. So I take it into my own hands. And one quote that I think is really, I don't know, it just hit home for me is I read, it says, you can do anything, but not everything. Mm. So with that, it's kind of like you have all of these competing priorities and then you're able to choose what's most important. Like some things are not going to make it. Some things are not going to make the cut, right? Like if you have to meal prep, you have to do your laundry, you have to hit the gym, you have to like all these things, but your friend invites you out, out for coffee, you know, like right. mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes it's got to make some hard decisions there. And like, um, and maybe, you know what, maybe if you want to see your friend for coffee and your laundry gets pushed out, you know, right. <laughs> shoot, you don't know. Like it's all about what priorities are most important to you. And that's why when people say like, Oh, I don't have time. Like if it's important, you'll make time. Like that's Absolutely. straight up. And obviously I'm a super positive, happy person, but like when it comes down to it, like the quote that I always hold myself to is you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Mm-hmm. And like, it it shows it all matters everything matters like everything that you put in matters and like the way you do anything it's another quote <laughs> from when i listened to mm-hmm. mind pump actually the way you do anything is the way you do everything and like 
making time for that is just as important as like making time for things and training when you're in your off season is just as, if not more important than making time for training and cardio during your, during your prep. Right. So like Absolutely. all about prioritization and it's not sexy, but like just managing your time really well. And and then understanding that, like, sometimes that means making tough decisions that not everybody's going to like. And you got to be selfish sometimes. And that's what it is. Mm. And then also understanding and, like, creating those boundaries at work. Like, I only have five minutes to eat in between these two meetings. Please let me eat. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and, like, and saying that and then getting up and doing that and, and then going back to work. So... I'm sure there's a lot of, I mean, I know that there's a lot of other industries where it's very similar, where like they don't have um, a lot of time to eat. For example, I know that there's a lot of nurses um, and like people in different types of um, professions where they have to kind of manage how they're eating or like spread out their food over a long period of time. And it's just like, I think, finding what's right. Right. Because again, most important is consistency and adherence and so time time management not sexy but Mm -hmm. doing it and then managing your nutrition and like your intake and timing it out correctly so you are adherent all coming back down to adherence absolutely no exactly and so uh, we've covered so much in this episode and I've loved I seriously loved every single minute of it. And oh, me too. <laughs> um, I'm, I want you to be able to share like your best advice for girls who are thinking about competing but haven't yet. And I know you've given us lots of good advice, but maybe if there's anything else we haven't sure. shared yet. <laughs> and then your best advice for a girl who is really on her, you know, road to pro. Okay. I thought about this for a long time. <laughs> I love that. So first, for advice for someone who's thinking about competing. Um, if you have already researched and like found out what's going, like you you think you have what it takes. And by, if you think you have what it takes, I mean, like there's tons of girls who post on this, basically like, you know, the full time commitment, you know, the financial commitment, you know, how much it's going to take out of you mentally, all that. Once you checked off all those boxes, like that is just a starting point. First of all, once you check off all those boxes, then find a good coach and go for it. Like, just go for it. If you think you're ready and you're considering it and you think that you check up all those boxes and something in your heart's pulling on, pulling, like tugging and saying that this might be for you, do it. You know, like there's no, there's no better way to find out than to just do it. So go for it. And um, then kind of pulling it in from before is, um, find the right coach <laughs> yes, and then trust the process, you know, like go for it, but make sure you hit all those boxes and make sure you have the right coach and you're set up for success and then go for it. Like give it your all, give it a hundred percent, empty your tank. That's it for, um, for someone who's considering, because if you're considering it, it's like, how long have you been considering it? You know, you want to Just mm-hmm. go for it. <laughs> and then, um, cause you don't know what you're capable of until you like do it sorry this is super cool um and then for someone who is trying to go pro holy moly girl go you first of all and then also just keep going so if you notice like I have a a bunch of quotes just like at the top of my head um my dad used to always say to me um it's hard to be someone who never gives up so in that same sense I've I've brought that with me to every show it's like show up show up show up show up <laughs> just keep that they'll remember your face they you give it your all you keep doing it you keep delivering on their feedback big big point there like if it's, it's if it's to stop and like go grow like go do that don't don't just keep doing shows <laughs> let's be real here like yeah. don't step on stage until you deliver on their feedback but if you are delivering on their feedback just keep going just keep going and that's all I love it. There's so much beauty in this process. Like I've even talked to other people and I was like, national shows give me so much life. Like I love being at national shows because the passion is like, you could just like feel it all around you. <laughs> like when I see a girl go pro, when I was at junior nats and I saw the girl, um, oh my gosh, uh, I can't remember her name, but it's her and her husband 
argue a fit couple or something like that on Instagram. But when I saw her go pro and then win the whole show at Junior Nats, like I felt like I was I was winning. You know, like mm. you can see the passion. So like enjoy that process and keep going because there's there's something je ne sais quoi or whatever something really special at all those national shows and it might be her time now and maybe it's your time the next time but it's someone's time and it's all special that's really cool I love that it everything is just like a big culmination of much of what we've discussed and the wisdom you've imparted and um you just have such a bright soul and the, you're, you articulate things so well, and I, I've loved talking to you. And I know that I'm, I'm sure that people listening also loved listening to us talk. So I want them to be able to reach out to you if they don't already follow you or talk to you. So can you give them your um, Instagram or maybe the best ways to connect with you? So yes, first of all, thank you for all that. <laughs> that was extremely sweet of you. I really appreciate it. You oh, know what welcome. a big fan of you. I am and how much I've been following this podcast. So like, this is a dream come true. And then <laughs> that means so Instagram much to me. I, <laughs> good. I'm glad because I was sitting at my desk working on spread on like finance spreadsheets last late last year, listening to this podcast. And, like if I thought I was going to be on this a year from now, like, Oh my goodness. That's I was awesome. sitting there eating my rice, listening to the podcast, loving every minute. So I'm messaging you cool. like, when you go pro, you're coming on my yes. show. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm all here for it. And um, shoot, I cannot wait to hear all the episodes that recently came out too. Um, so um, you can find me on Instagram. It's just at Maya underscore IFBB pro. Um, so that's that. But also, okay, awesome. can I just tell like one funny quick story real quick? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. I'm like, let me take up two more hours. Like, no. No, I just love a story. good goody story. <laughs> okay, so after USA's, I went to try and update my Instagram handle on Instagram, obviously. And I was in the car with Shelby and um, Nicole on our way to dinner. And I kept trying to update it. And <laughs> Instagram kept telling me like, sorry, like this, you're unable to update it at this time, like not able to, to process or something. So like I was trying to update it to IFBB Pro and it was like, no, no. Oh <laughs> no. my God. Like, I kid you not. Like it, I wasn't able to do it until like the next day. You're like, this is the and only I was, reason I went pro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly it was for the handle. So, <laughs> so on my story, I actually had a joke where I was like, LOL, check out my pro, like my, my handle, but like it wasn't up. <laughs> and, and so it was like this running joke that it was like, sorry, sorry Maya, you're not a pro. <laughs> that is, you're not a pro until Instagram says so. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was good times. Good That's time. the truth, though. I'm always surprised when I'll like yeah. follow someone and I'm like, oh, they're an IFBB pro, like it's in their bio, but it's not in their handle. And I'm like, am I going to yeah. change my handle? I don't know yet. It's I a big commitment. It. I was like, should I not? Like, people know me by my set life. Like, do I change it? I totally get it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I understand why you would have the dilemma. It's a However, branding thing. Obviously, I was like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> You're like, but I also so, ate 3,000 calories, did yoga, then did a massive cut, worked my ass off for the last. I'm, I'm yeah, it's going to be. I like, <laughs> yep, done and done. <laughs> I'll <tell you> now. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's awesome. Well, thank Ooh. you so much for coming on and just everything you've shared. And um, I appreciate your time. And to everyone listening, if you did want more information on that on demand platform, like I said, I'll put a link in the podcast uh, notes that's always on celestial.fit slash podcast as well as all of the connection info to reach out with and follow and uh, just even talk to Maya so I hope that you all have an amazing rest of your day night or morning wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this episode just make it awesome Woo, thank you so much of course